Hey everyone, Katie Bertrand here. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I've got a new video for you today. We're going to be repurposing um, an old quilt. And this is actually a quilt that um, my great grandmother made. Super pretty. I've already cut into it some. But isn't that gorgeous? But it is old, and if you, I want to hold this up to you, but if you can see, it kind of looks bumpy, lumpy, whatever. That is actually the batting inside of it um, that is kind of disintegrated and gotten lumpy, but I absolutely, I love this. My mom had moved uh, downsized last year. I'm like, I had gotten into quilting, so I'm like, I feel like I need to rescue this. Surely there's some repurposing projects we can do with this. Um, so I've made a pillow out of one of them. I cut a square and this is like perfect for a pillow. So now I'm going to do some Christmas things because I got on Pinterest, um, as we all do, looking for our craft projects. And I have decided to make a stocking and some ornaments. So let me drop some things. So I'm actually using uh, McCall's pattern 3777. This pattern right here. Uh, this is a really fun pattern if you've never tried it, but it's got a stocking and it's got some ornaments, the tree skirt. I have made this three dimensional tree. Um, it's pretty fun. I did it out of some Skippy fabric, but I'm gonna be using the stocking pattern and then I've got um, some ornaments. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the ornament that I did. So this is just a heart shape. And what I did on this is on my sewing machine, I have some decorative stitches. And honestly, as long as I've been sewing, I really don't use my decorative stitches a whole lot. So I, now that I've gotten into quilting the past couple of years, um, they serve a little bit more purpose for some decorative edges. I just really haven't had a need for it. But this is the little blanket stitch. And you can also do this by hand. Um, I do not like to do anything by hand except needlepoint. So if there's a setting on my machine, I'm definitely gonna use it. Um, but all I did was, cut, this is since I cut it out, I didn't put a back on this, but you can put a back on this and then put some polyfill to make it uh, more of a stuffed ornament. But all I did was do this little decorative edge after I've cut the quilt. And then on the back, it, I caught the cording. So my hanger is on there. So it's gonna be on my tree. Um, you know, it's not going to be flipping around or anything like that. So you can put a back to it. Um, I just decided I did not want to do that. Um, but it kind of gives it that rustic look anyway, and I really like that. Um, so that's, you know, a great use of some of your decorative stitches on your machine. I'm also going to do the star, um, pattern for the ornament and do the same thing. So the next thing I did was I've cut out a front and a back for my stocking. So, got two pieces cut. Now, I was I was looking at this. I'm going to show you the other one in just a second. As I was looking at this, of course, we all like to have our names on our stockings. And this was my mother's uh, grandmother who made this. So I'm going to be giving um, the stocking to my mom. Uh, for, you know, she can hang it up at her. Um, patio home or hanging on the door or something like that so I was thinking you know oh I'll fill in you know her name down here and it'll be you know super cute just to you know put them because it kind of cuts into the squares you know for the stocking but then as I looked at it, I was like wait this circle is the perfect spot for a monogram so that's what I did so I put the monogram right in the circle and I absolutely love it um, it has a little bit of red, so I brought in more of the red just to make it a little bit more Christmassy. So now I've got my two pieces cut. So as you make your stocking, you're going to have two pieces and then you're going to put your right sides together. Now, what I'm going to need to do for my stocking, I have not read the pattern. I have no idea what the pattern says. So, um, if you're following along the pattern, it may some say something totally different. But really, the only thing I need to do is I want to finish these edges. So I'm going to put some lining to it, but I'm not going to line the entire stocking. You can if you want to. I'm just kind of doing it more of a quick and easy way. Um, so I'm going to be sewing um, lining to the edge and then fold it down. And then we're going to sew the side seam. So I'll show you that. And I also got, I was trying to decide what I was going to use. 
for my stocking hanger. And I was trying to decide, um, thinking about a polka dot ribbon, but then I had this. So since my quilt is, you know, old and vintage, I thought using this um, twine cording would give it kind of a more rustic look. So I'm gonna be using this as my um, stocking hanger. And I may use this for my other ornament too. So first thing I'm going to do is I've just got some cotton material and I have cut it. I'm going to cut it. <laughs> um, you know, we're gonna line it up across the top and I've basically got it going about halfway down the stocking because it's gonna be down in there. You know, uh, this is gonna be more of just decorative. I'm not gonna be getting in into the stocking, but it's also gonna be sewn in the side seam also. So, you know, just so we have a nice finished edge. So I've cut the, the length, you know, about halfway down. Um, so let me cut across the top. So on both pieces here, I am going to sew, line this up, I'm gonna sew right across the top, just a very narrow seam allowance. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to do this on both pieces. I'm gonna angle my camera just a little bit. There you go, now you can see more of what I'm doing. <laughs> have just sewn right across the top. This is going to flip up and then I'm going to fold it down. Okay. So I'm going to take this over to the iron and I want to press this down so that my lining is not show, being seen from the front. So I'm going to iron this down real quick. And I'm gonna do it on both pieces. So I'm flipping this up and folding it back. So I gave that a good press. So now from the front and the top, I have a nice finished edge, okay? Um, and I don't want that to roll. Okay, so now we're going to make sure both sides are down. I'm going to line up my stocking here, the front and back piece. this bedding in here and when I mean this bedding is kind of disintegrating I'm gonna pull some of this out just to show you this is what happens to that bedding after many years of washing and wear and just it just gets all old and clumpy and it's yucky so it's kind of making this a little bit more bulky but that's okay grab a couple more pins And I'm pinning, making sure I've got the lining caught. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my hanger. So I'm going to give it a decent amount. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in the seam. It's right there. I'm not going to pin that, so I'm going to have to be careful and hold that. But I'm putting it pretty close to the top. I'm not putting, I'm putting it about half an inch down because I don't want to see it right at the top. And plus it's a little bit bulky right there. So hopefully this isn't too thick to sew through. We'll see. We may have to move to the industrial machine. I'm not sure. Hold on. All right, I'm just going a little slow. I'm doing a little back stitch. I'm making sure my lining is getting caught. And now I'm trying to go over this cording, so we'll see. Hold on. as a guide. I don't, I'm not using a real big or a real deep seam allowance. this edge one second okay well I'm gonna go back and stitch this on my industrial machine because this is super bulky and this machine is not liking it but we can finish the project so as you see I'm just got this down you know about halfway I'm gonna clip in the curve here you know, so when you turn it, it will lay a little better. It won't look like it's kind of, um, what am I trying to say? It won't get pleated or have pulls and whatnot. So I'm clipping to the, the sewing line, not through it. Gotta be careful. And I'm going around the curves and around the toe. It's mostly important on this inside curve because we want this to go flat so it does make a difference if you're making any stocking and i'm going to go around the back a little bit more okay so very simple now you can fully line your stocking or you don't have to but it's more mostly important here at the top so i just kind of cheated a little bit and did the fast version I'm going to turn this. Now I'm just pushing out these seams. Now, depending on what your fabric is, it's not going to be as difficult as mine is. This is pretty thick. 
because of that batting in here. But this is absolutely adorable. I love this already. And there we have it. So, I've got that turned. Give it a little press. Let me push this up a little. And then we have our hanger. And that's it. Ta da! But I absolutely love that. So, you could, you know, you can embroider it down here. Now, I did the embroidery before because it was going to be down here. So, you can put your stocking together and you can add a the pattern actually has a cuff on it. I did not want a cuff on this, as you can see on that pattern. I did not want a, a pattern I, or a cuff. So I just literally used the basic um, stocking and that's why I had to finish mine with a lining. So if you're using the pattern, um, you'll be putting a cuff on it and that will finish your edge. Um, so it's a little different, but you can do your stockings you, however you want to. But if you want to personalize it down here at the toe, do that personalization before you put your stocking together because otherwise you're not going to be able to get down there and then you'll have to sew through it or unstitch it that kind of thing so save yourself some time but I just wanted to share with you repurposing this old quilt that my great-grandmother made I love it and I'm going to make some more ornaments to go with it so we have this in the stocking um, but it's a great way to hold on to something. So I'm hoping, you know, when I'm no longer around and I've made a bunch of quilts that my grandkids or great grandkids, uh, will find it somewhere in somebody's house. I don't know. And want to repurpose it like I did. Um, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had fun making this and sharing it with you and, uh, I hope you'll have a great Christmas 2020. So if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified for our next video, hit the little bell icon and you'll get a notification when I have another video. So I will see you all later. Bye.